In this video, instead of taking volumetric chunks out of our objects or gluing objects together, we're going to be focusing on slicing objects into multiple pieces. Let's begin with the section tool. The section tool is really an architectural type of a tool where we want to slice through an object to understand it volumetrically. So sometimes that's a floor plan, sometimes that's a building section. And so let's go ahead and take a look at that tool. Clicking on the section tool says, first we need to select the object to be sectioned. So I'm gonna click on the object that we made in the last video, and then it says to select a planar face to cut through that. And if you don't have a planar face, you can just click, and it will use the active reference plane to do that. So I'm just gonna click on the reference plane, and you can see that it creates this plane that has these handles on it. And if I click on any one of the yellow handles, I can now drag that through my object and graphically set it wherever I want. If I click on one of the red handles, I can rotate it in that direction. And if I click on one of the green handles, I can rotate it in that direction. So this is a great way to slice through your geometry, again, using a flat plane. We have a few more options over here in the tool options palette. We can either choose to keep the front of the object, the back of the object, we can keep both sides of the object, or we can get just the two-dimensional slice. Once you decide where you want to actually get that section, you can go ahead and click the cut section button to commit that operation. What I'm not gonna do is click that button because when you don't click it and you go ahead and try to choose another tool, a dialog box asks if you want it to cut the section. So go ahead and make the appropriate decision at that time. For this time, I'm gonna choose no and discard this section and show you another way to do it. This time, I'm going to specifically place a plane exactly where I want the section to be cut. So I'm going to just draw a simple two-dimensional surface of a rectangle. And again, when I draw anything, it wants to default to drawing it on the reference plane unless I move over the object with my face-based reference planes and I could draw it over there in any orientation I choose. I chose to draw it off to the side for a very specific reason, and that is because Form Z does not care with this specific tool where that section plane is located. It can be in the object, it can be outside of the object, it can visually go all the way through the object, or it can just be a small piece over here. And it doesn't have to be a rectangle. It could be a circle, it could be a triangle, it could be a star, it could be a hexagon. It really doesn't matter as long as it is a planar surface, which means it is entirely flat. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to move that using the move tool, I'm gonna move that vertically, and typically architectural floor plan sections are cut four feet above the ground plane. So I'm going to type in four feet and hit the enter key. So now that rectangle is hovering four feet above my reference plane, and I'm going to deselect it, click on the section tool, select the object that I want to be sectioned, and then click on the planar surface that I'm going to use to cut that section, and you can see it cuts it at exactly the location of that section plane. Now I don't have to visually set it with these handles over here. I know exactly where that section plane was located and that's where I want the cut. And I'm going to go ahead now and click cut section. And you can see it actually commits that. So I no longer have the top half of my object. It is gone and I still have my plane here and I have the base of my object. I'm going to undo that and do one more section cut here. This time I'm going to do a vertical section cut. So I'm going to use the 3D extrusion, but I'm just gonna draw a planar surface here off to the side, something like this. Again, it doesn't have to go through the object. I'm going to click on the section tool, click on the object to be sliced, and then click on the section plane. And you can see those are coplanar. They line up exactly, and I get exactly the section cut that I want, and I can then cut that section. Now, section cuts also work on multiple objects at the same time. Let's get rid of these two section planes. And I'm going to now take this object, move it, multiple copy, and I'm gonna do kind of a stair-stepping kind of a thing here. So I'm gonna turn off my perpendicular snap, and we get multiple objects that are all stepping up in this fashion. I'm going to draw a plane that kind of slices through all of these objects. 
And this time, in order to cut through all of these objects at the same time, I'm going to use the pre-pick method. When I use just the section tool, I can click one object and one slicer. This time I'm going to use my area pick to draw a window around all of these objects. And then I'm going to select the tool. And then I'm going to select the slicing plane. And you can see it slices through all of the objects at the same time. And again, this is still dynamic, so I can move it after the fact if I want to, and then commit that section cut to all of those objects. The next tool we're gonna to talk about is the surface split tool. And before I go ahead and run this command, let's talk about the differences between this one and the section tool. Every time we cut a section, it kept our objects as solid objects. The surface split tool is different in that it is treating the objects that we're going to be using for the cutting both as surfaces, even if this object appears to be a solid right now, which it is. If I select this object and I go into my inspector and we can see in here that it is a solid in the info tab. But that doesn't really matter as soon as I use this surface split tool. What I'm gonna do here is turn on another surface that I've already drawn in my scene file and use that object to slice through this cube object that we started out with. So using surface split, we're going to go ahead and choose the object we wanna cut. And then we're going to choose this curving surface to do the slicing. And this is another one of the major differences between this tool and the section tool is this tool works with complex curving objects if you so choose. It could be a straight object, but it also works with non-planar faces. In the tool options, I can choose one-way or two-way split. I'm gonna choose the one-way split and choose the object that I wanna keep and then choose the object that I want to do the slicing. And you'll see I get a very complex cut through this object. And what I'm gonna do is just move this off to the side and we can indeed see that these are now surfaces. They're no longer solids. Again, going into the inspector in the info, we can see now the topology has been changed to surface. So this tool results in a surface, but it does allow you to have non-linear, rotated, complex curving surfaces do cutting with, and so you can get some really complex geometry out of that tool. Let's now take a look at the slice tool, and the slice tool works similarly, but it uses a line to do the slicing. And so it's really dependent on your reference plane location. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna flip the reference plane up on its side, and I'm going to draw an arc that does something like this, and I'm going to make sure that's just a 2D surface and hit the E key to end, so I have just a two-dimensional arc. I'm gonna now move it so that it's fully encompassing my other object here. And this time I'm going to use that to slice through. So again, reference plane dependent, it's going to project this slice all the way through my object. So I'm going to click on the slice tool and you'll notice there is only one option in here, which is the heal option. And this is where we're a little bit different than the surface split tool in that when the heal box is checked, it will keep the two pieces as solids. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. I'm gonna click on the object that I wanna keep. Then I'm gonna click on my arc that I drew to slice. And we can see that that projected that arc all the way through the object in both directions to slice it. And I'm going to move this object off to the side here. And we can see, indeed, it has kept those two objects as solids instead of surfaces this time. Let's click on this one. And we can see here that it is a solid. Let's go ahead and do that one more time, but this time without the heel box checked. So again, slicing, turn off the heel box, click on the object we want to slice, click on the slicing object, and this time let's just drag this off to the side and when the heel box is not checked we can indeed see that these objects are now treated as surfaces so something to be aware of is that when you're using the slice tool to use a wire to slice through it's always going to be perpendicular to the reference plane you have the option to keep them as solids or to treat them as surfaces Two more tools to finish off in this file are going to be the stitch tool and the unstitch tool. Let's start off with the unstitch tool. And we checked earlier on this object in the inspector in the info tab, and we saw that it is a solid, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're going to use the unstitch tool to unstitch a face off of this object. 
and I'm going to click on that face and I'm going to now move it up. So I'm gonna tap my command key to move it up vertically. And by unstitching a face, you can see now that we've turned this object into a surface by disengaging this face from the rest of the body. And we can indeed see that it is totally hollow. So this is a way to turn a solid into a surface or you could just delete a face completely and get the same result. But by stitching and unstitching, you might want to do some modifications inside an object and then take that face and then you might want to stitch it right back on. So I'm going to move it back into place. And as long as these boundaries are all within a certain tolerance, we can then use the stitch tool to click on this object, click on our original one, and it will stitch them and glue them back together. And we can see now, once again, it is a solid. So these are some pretty useful tools when you're trying to solve some potentially intricate issues with geometry. These tools can come in extremely handy. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to get notified when new videos are released on this channel, click the subscribe button below and click the notification bell icon to get a notification when new videos are released. See you in the next one.